In this video, I'm interviewing Katarzyna Richter, an inspiring wellbeing strategist and cultural psychologist who supports her clients to achieve a more balanced lifestyle. Kat will share some great advice around how you can balance work and life whilst working from home. And she offers some great tips on how to manage stress during lockdown. Hello, my name is Melanie Athliad. I'm a teacher and enabler who facilitates social, emotional and spiritual transformation in adults and children who desire to feel happier, more confident and more connected. Today I am so excited because we've got the lovely Kasha Richter from Deal With Culture and Kasha is a cross-cultural psychologist and wellbeing strategist who helps her clients create happier, healthier and a more balanced lifestyle and avoid burnout. Great skills. Kasha runs wellbeing courses, retreats and individual mentoring. She's also a yoga teacher and we're so lucky because she's kindly offered to talk to you today about how you can balance work and life whilst working from home and we'll bring you more tips on how to manage stress during lockdown so i'm super excited about this interview and i know you're going to get so much value from it well-being is so important kasha as you and i both know but it's such a general term it's one that we use all the time but what does it actually mean would you like to talk to us a little bit about what well-being actually is and why it's so important it's you're absolutely right and um i was shocked myself you know i didn't see it coming this uh, past week i've been actually interviewing people and I think it was more than 50% that, you know, they answered uh, that when I asked them, like, what are they looking out, you know, for, for the job? What are the three most important things they're after? They would name well-being. And I'm like, are you kidding me? You don't have a job. It's in the middle of lockdown and you're looking for well-being, you know? So... <laughs> I, I, I was totally stuck, struck, you know, it's just, it's incredible how important it is. And that made me realize like, you know, if employers or companies don't really embrace this uh, concept of looking after, of caring for people, you know, they will basically have no people to work for them <laughs> because the people are so much aware. I mean, I was shocked. Anyhow, um, uh, talking about definitions, the World Health Organization defines well-being as um, a state of uh, well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential, can cope with the normal stresses of life, uh, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make a contribution in her or his community. So um, this is the definition like from World Health Organization, right? And um, what uh, we have to realize, it's already mentioned in that definition, uh, it is not the same, uh, it has like few components. It's quite holistic um, concept. It, it, uh, it mentions um, our productivity, so like what we produce when we work, uh, but also our relationship with others, how we relate with other people, and our that, that's where the community comes from. And it can go quite wild, uh, wide because, you know, there are different um, uh, concepts and different uh, organizations that embrace it in a very wide scope, like, you know, on the international level or country level or, you know, government level. So it can go quite wild. Um, so what do we have? Our own potential, right? So... Um, uh, this is relating to the, um, to, you know, not only our intelligence, but also uh, our talents, our, um, our abilities, capabilities, our interests, our um, curiosity. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, I, I haven't found really um, a definition that would be 100% great. Um, 
the the definition that actually I I work with on a daily basis it's like a scale and I have it in my workbook and this is like a printout from my workbook so if you see it's like a balance yeah it's like a scale and on yeah. one end on one end we have um, challenges is this where's my finger <laughs> it's going <laughs> all right um, so let me try to make it straight okay uh like spatial reasoning is not my skill as you can see anyway i wouldn't be a good architect okay um challenges, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> challenges all right so whatever um stress or difficulties we face in life and on the other hand on the other um uh, spectra, end of the spectrum we have um resources okay all different resources so uh what can be the resources um our our skills like knowing how to cope with stress um our um time like time for example to cope with a problem um our contacts our our friends our support you know the the people that we uh, go to when we don't feel good you know a few days ago i wasn't feeling good and you know i was crying i was so overwhelmed and you know i had a very good Good friend you know and I said like listen you know it doesn't work it's falling apart you know it just doesn't work and and you know and he listened to me and he gave me totally different perspective you know and he said Kasia look at it from this angle so you know our friends are our resources so Absolutely. we really have to realize what do we have our partner can be our resource our children can be our resource um, our dog can be our resource you know so um, all those resources that we have that help us to uh, overcome and deal with all those challenging situations that we face so it's very very important to not only have them but to realize that we have them and uh, really to stop and think what is happening what is going on um, we will be talking about emotions i think a little bit later on uh, so but it's, it's, it's the balance yeah it's the balance between like you know all the hardships that are you know all the situations in life i don't like to call it problems because i believe there are situations not problems and um the resources that we have in order to face those situations and resolve those situations okay this is well-being yeah, absolutely brilliant. Yeah, and we've got so much there. Um, I think looking at those resources and sometimes taking the time to be grateful for those resources and just think, well, what have I got that I'm grateful for? And that gratitude goes a long way too, doesn't it, in, in helping that. So absolutely. So lockdown has post, posed a huge challenge to the well-being of many adults and children. And I know that people watching this, um, a lot of them will be parents and they're juggling caring for the children and supporting homeschooling, whilst also working from home. And this is obviously a huge area of stress for many people and it therefore impacts massively on the wellbeing. Would you mind talking to us a little bit about how they could maybe manage those challenges and achieve more balance in their lives? Definitely. Um... Parents are um, really uh, in, a, in a tough spot because there are so, so many um, uh, requirements uh, and, uh, for coming you know, for, from them, um, towards them. So many expectations and so many things to, to, to juggle and balance. And um, that's why they have to really stop take a take a deep breath and like reassess the situation uh, because sometimes we are so focused just on a very tiny bit of something you know that we don't see the big picture that's why we have to stop sometimes take a breath take a step back and see and realize so um what a lot of parents are struggling with is is basically uh, combining the homeschooling working from home um and you know not being fully ready for it or being tired from working from home and tired because it's been going on for like a year now yeah. and uh, there there are a few things uh, to that can help us 
uh, first of all, realizing like um, in human um, being, uh, as a human being, you know, we need a structure, we need frames and the work and school, it all gives us the structure. And those frames and those structures have been really changed and redefined uh, in the past year. And uh, what we can do in order to recreate it and to make it work for us is to um, create those structures, okay? So like uh, it can be as simple as decluttering a space and really creating a dedicated space to work. Uh, it, w this is very simple and uh, it has been mentioned so many times. What is not so obvious and it's a very good tip for creating the boundaries is like, you know, in the morning, normally when we go to school, when we go to work, what do we do? We, we dress up and we go out and we commute. And now with all this uh, homeschooling, remote working, we don't do it. Yeah, and there's so many children just, and my children included, they just have to stay in the pajamas all day. And it's, you know, exactly. Yeah. So you see, there's no um, distinction. So what you have to do, you have to create that distinction. So in the morning, you dress up your children and you tell them, go and walk for 10 minutes and come back. And when you come back, you sit down and we start homeschooling. And the same thing when you finish. When you finish, you know, you, you dress up, you go for a walk, you walk your dog, you go and get your groceries, whatever. You just get out and you walk uh, and then you come back and you know that when you're back, you're not doing work anymore. You're doing other activities, you know, so that creates the frame. Yeah, that's a great tip. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it changes a lot because, you know, when we stack at home, uh, we're like, OK, I have to complete this. I have to finish that. And, you know, I have to do lunch and, you know, uh, and, you, you know, it's it's just it's overwhelming. So we have to really simplify things, you know, just create a framework if it's not there and uh, and just uh, take it from there and again uh, setting boundaries and boundaries with technology for example you know make rules uh no mobile phones you know at the table the meals without mobile phones because the, the technology is so overwhelming and it's present okay it serves us uh but you know we have to take a break from it in order just our brain to function. Yeah. So set rules, whatever rules will work for you that I don't know, you go for a walk without a mobile phone, you eat your meal without a mobile phone, you don't bring your mobile phone computer or any internet device into your bedroom, whatever works for you and start with one rule at a time, yeah. not to be overwhelmed. Yeah, because that's quite hard, isn't it? With kids when they've got into the habit of um, having the mobile phones with them all the time. So I think that one rule at a time is quite important in sort of gradually weaning them away from that and getting them into good habits. Yes, and what, what we have to remember about children and uh, teenagers, uh, how they differ from adults when it comes to using and getting hooked to a technology, they, they don't have the mechanisms of self-control. That's why they are much more prone to internet addiction. So uh, even when, so, you know, when you take a, take away the internet device from a child or a teenager that is used to it, you know, he or she will throw a tantrum, uh, possibly, or, you know, there's a high chance for it. So, uh, or, or will display different undesired behaviors. So, you know, don't do radical if, if the child is, is really hooked, you know, don't do it radically, but one step at a time. You, you set the rules slowly, slowly, okay? Once one rule is implemented, then another one. And then also um, uh, offer uh, offer something instead. I mean, like, I don't know, go for a walk and, uh, and you know, ask your, your child to, to, to notice something about the surrounding, you know, just... Uh, uh, just to be mindful of, of, of all other things. I don't know, find uh, find something new. 
uh, so so that you know the uh, the attention goes away from from the from the technology you know go and feel the air how does it feel you know and describe it you know so it, it's very simple but it, it takes initiative yeah sorry that's bringing you back to the mindfulness isn't it it's about being present in the moment and appreciating what's around you because i think adults as well as children can become addicted to mobile phones can't they and you see them quite often when you're walking outside with your phone but you're missing so much so yeah absolutely that's a really great point <laughs> another point uh, that is important and uh, goes especially for adults and parents is dropping the perfectionism, you know, forgetting about it, you know, really look at what is happening. We're dealing here with a major shift, with a totally different circumstances. Uh, these are not the usual circumstances. So, you know, don't be so harsh on yourself and don't try to perform like, you know, 110% when the world is underperforming, you know, so, uh, so really, really, uh, you know, just the uh, go back to basic needs and uh, see, you know, what are the basic minimal things that can be met in this situation and uh, and just let be, you know, it doesn't have to, you know, what is the minimum? If you're feeling overwhelmed and frustrated, you know, if you just try to constantly perform and overperform, you're going to kill yourself. Your your mind your mindset and your your mental health are gonna go really crazy, and you're gonna uh, end up like you know uh, going towards like you know depression and suicidal thoughts. Is that where you wanna go? So you know, really go back and so like ask yourself, okay, what is the minimum I can do? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's the same with the children as well. It's not pushing them too hard because you know the children are feeling all the stresses of lockdown at the moment as well so you know it's just accepting well what's what's enough you know you don't have to push 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 because I think some parents do sort of feel that that pressure and well this has got to be for school and it's got to be perfect and you know and it hasn't and schools understand that parents are working parents are struggling with things you know and you know children have to have to be able to relax as well and know their limits so yeah absolutely. that's true and also with children we have to remember um it's a very very crucial age when uh when our um self-esteem is being formed when our um belief in ourself is being formed and you know the parents have to really you know encourage and provide a lot of care and love and you know if you know the, the child will not reach 100 percent score in the test but will have the support and care from the parents you know it will go much better you know yeah absolutely i've just been writing about that in my blog this week so you blog, see blog blog, so yeah check um a learning from animals page if you want to read that it's on there on a, as a youtube video i'd love um, to read that I, I i definitely will oh fantastic well the blog's on my website and i've posted it as a video on youtube as well which is on my page so yeah but absolutely i agree 100 percent. and i think if parents are feeling the pressure and they're seeing that everything's 100 percent, as you're saying you know they've got to be perfect then they're modeling that behavior to the children. So the children are going to sort of pick up on the same strains and anxiety and follow in the same path. So it's, it's really important, isn't it, to sort of take care of yourself as parents and show your children that that's important too. Yes, because, you know, later on it leads to uh, more disruption, more problems, you know, with uh, children having their basic needs of, of uh, feeling love, feeling accepted, feeling uh, wanted by parents uh, unmet and that leads to so many other things in the future that will basically um, manifest later on in life in one way or the other and create a lot of turmoil that actually can be avoided. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, fantastic. So some great tips there. Um, so we touched on stress a little bit earlier and how juggling lots of balls can create a great deal of stress and as can the uncertainty of what the future holds. And that can lead to a lot of heightened emotions. So would you mind talking to us about the emotions that this might bring up and what we can do to better control our emotions? 
so the um, uh, lockdown or this uh, this pandemic situation um, going through a lot of changes through a lot of uncertainty uh, has uh, primarily uh, created um, a feeling of uh, fear, anxiety, uncertainty, sometimes frustration, um, anger. Uh, resentment. So, um, you know, we, we need to first of all realize uh, because if I think, you know, if, if you look on like average person, uh, they, they act out, but they don't know why. They don't know like, you know, what emotions are they experiencing because they are so out of touch with themselves. Okay, because they always focus on like performing, delivering, meeting KPIs, meeting this, meeting that, you know, and they never stop and really do the uh, inside work that will make you realize the simple things. Why are you uh, behaving the way you're behaving? What is the reason? So um, usually uh, these are the underlying emotions. And uh, the way to manage emotions is, first of all, uh, stopping and uh, realizing what emotions are you experiencing, what is happening. And the important thing is we are humans and it is human to experience all range of emotions. Uh, so the basic, like, um, basic five emotions would be um, uh, joy, sadness, anger, fear, disgust, if I didn't make a mistake, all right? But this is generally the idea. So um, recognizing the emotions is, uh, is the first step in order to, to be able to handle them, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, handling the emotions. Um, I have no idea how to do it with children. The only thing that I remembered a uh, long time ago, a friend told me, you know, I, um, I had a friend who's been doing the yoga teacher um, course together. And uh, I think that the, this technique was uh, that she mentioned was, uh, was a good technique to work with children. It's like, you know, to talk with the child, like, you know, uh, why you were behaving like this, you know, was there some sort of monster chasing you, you know, and if you were to name this monster, what would it be? Would it be fear or would it be anger, you know, or, yeah. you know, and then the child starts like thinking, you know, in these categories. So it's like, yeah, okay, it was, uh, it was the, the, the monster of anger and like why the uh, why was it anger, you know, oh, because, you know, I didn't get what I wanted or whatever. So what will you do next time, you know, when you see this monster? Yeah. Uh, um, oh, maybe we should talk to him, like, what are the options, you know, shall we, I don't know, put him in a cage or talk to him or try to tame him or whatever, you know. Yeah. So when the child learns that, you know, he is in control, he or she, is in control and actually can do something with it, is not a victim. So um, taking ownership is one of the pillars of uh, resilience, of, of really strong functioning in, in the world of coping with difficult situations. Mm -hmm. So, and children can be taught that. So adults, obviously they can use the same technique <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, or basically um, reflecting, okay, where is it coming from? Uh, and sometimes we also pick up on um, emotions, you know, functioning in different environments. They can be like emotions of, you know, our uh, partners, our co-workers, our family, you know, somebody is just like, you know, experiencing, let's say, a lot of fear. And we co-living or co-working with them, you know, we, we share this. Sometimes we don't even realize it. So useful question uh, is, who does it belong to? Is it mine? And once we start like, you know, wondering, it's like, fuck, it's not even mine. <laughs> 
Yeah, and you can see that when you walk into a room when somebody's had an argument, you can you can feel that and you can pick up on that mood then. So that's a um, sort of a good example really of how how that does affect you because other people's moods really do, and a lot of people don't realise that. So yeah, another great tip. Yeah. So yeah, ability to control emotions. I think it's it, it's it's really really crucial. And uh, I don't know how is the school system, but. Uh, definitely, if you ask me, it should be something that should be taught at school, you know, as a useful I agree, totally. I agree totally. That's why I've developed Lama Meditation, because it's not something that's given enough time on the school curriculum. I think things are sort of starting to get a little bit better on that front, but uh, there is still a lot of work to be, to be done there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I strongly believe, Melanie, that you, you should push it, you know, you should really push it to the to the level that will implement it across schools, because uh, that's definitely what, what people need. And, you know, things are changing in the society and uh, the, the, the more and more is being to talked about in terms of trends, in terms of future, future of work, future of functioning in a society that now the currency is care now the value is well-being you know so, yeah. so the kpis are totally different yeah. and the ability to manage emotions it's going to be super skill the thing and, is if you manage it as a child because the emotions that you experience as an adult you've learned as a child and quite often they've carried across. So if you've got low self-esteem and low confidence as a child, you're going to take that into adulthood, aren't you? And that's when you start getting into things like imposter syndrome, where you're thinking, well, everyone's better than me or more experienced. And that just comes down to the self-esteem and confidence. So I absolutely agree. It's so, so important to, to work on those emotions and that em emotional intelligence, which is another term people don't really understand, but it's it's the same thing. It's it's recognizing your emotions and dealing with your emotions, and it's just as important as any other aspect, if not more important than the curriculum. <laughs> yes, I think another important thing that uh, before we move on uh, to 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 mention about uh, managing emotions, like because not everyone. <laughs> is ready or willing to, to start working and analyzing their emotions. And uh, the helpful tip here would be just um, do whatever makes you feel better. Think of like, you know, activity for five minutes that you can do. Uh, and everybody is different. You know, you might want to uh, listen to music, do yoga, go for a walk, go for a run, take a bath, s smell a candle, you know, have a yeah. coffee, whatever. Whatever works with you, if it can shift your mood in five minutes, just do it. You know, simple as that, you know, taking deep breaths, because, you know, we are different and yeah, there's so many different techniques there. Uh, and we just have to ultimately find this, whatever works for us. Yeah, absolutely. So, what would be the top three well-being tips um, that you would like to share with us today? So, one thing that I've, I've, uh, I've mentioned just now, uh, find whatever works for you. Okay, well, you, you, you can educate yourself and see what is out there, you can test it, uh, but like, you know, if uh if you are not feeling comfortable doing yoga or going running or you know dancing or singing or i don't know doing what just don't do it uh just do something that actually elevates your mood you know um and and stick to it and it's fine um so really finding something that works for you um asking yourself um simple questions where can i create healthy boundaries mm. and uh, we have to realize just like we were talking earlier about the boundaries of uh, like a framework like you know this is the workspace this is the work time and this is a clear division um uh, so we see that the division can be like, you know, in terms of space, in terms of time, uh, and we all need this, uh, like a, 
transition like a ritual so like we know in the in the morning when i start work i mean i don't know i uh, i uh, i do certain activities uh, and this is how i know that i'm starting work the same when i finish work i don't know i go out for a uh, for a walk or or i do this i do that uh, but then i know this is the end of work uh, so creating clear boundaries and the same, I will mention again, clear, uh, creating boundaries with um, our uh, people around us. So, yeah. for example, being assertive and not say and saying, um, uh, I cannot help you with this now or I cannot offer you my time now. I will offer it, you know, uh, later because I'm doing this or that, you know. So really thinking about ourselves, our priorities, what is important to our health, uh, being um, selfish in an assertive way, like knowing why we are uh, assertive uh, and having our uh, mental health and our well-being, you know, as a, as a priority uh, in a most loving and kind way. Uh, because empaths, you know, they suffer later on. <laughs> um, so, um, where can I create uh, healthy boundaries? Um, and uh, what can I do today? Asking yourself, what can I do today to create uh, a better well-being for myself? Mm. Just... Yeah. Creating this awareness, asking this uh, yourself this simple question, you know, it might be uh, taking a break during daytime, it can be taking a nap if you need it, uh, it can be going for a walk, it can be uh, preparing a healthy meal, it can be asking your partner for a help, it can be delegating, you know, and also um, uh, there's a whole... Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we uh, mentioned that, but I think it's a good moment now. Uh, delegation. You see, in in a business world, the time management and you know all these things. Uh, what do you do in order to, to to manage tasks? You know, you delegate. And at home with children, it's exactly the same. You have to delegate. Uh, so, uh, as a parent, you know what children are capable of. Where do they need the support? Um, it's like an onboarding, you know, when you have a new employee, you have to support them for a certain time before they um, develop the skills to the desired level. So, you know, as a parent, you know, uh, but basically delegating. Don't make the children totally dependent on you, you know, create this you know, support them, support them and encourage them to do things on their own. And one very useful tip is um, taken out from aviation. It's taken out from cockpit, you know. Um, when pilots are in a cockpit, before they start, before they take off, they have um, a checklist. And uh, so that they don't forget anything because, you know, in case they forget, it's going to be a major uh, problem. Uh, they cross-check it. So, like, you know, the uh, first officer reads the checklist, like, you know, flaps on, engine on, this, that. And then it, each time he reads the thing from the checklist, the uh, other, the pilot, uh, the captain or the co-pilot basically physically checks it and says, like, done or tick or whatever he says. So, um, this way we are sure that all things are completed. And uh, so it's a checklist, right? And how parents can, can um, create a, a checklist. Uh, incorporate simple tasks that you can delegate, such as making laundry uh, to children and say like, okay, today your task will be to do the laundry, okay? And this, this is a checklist, you know, and you give them a checklist. <laughs> And on the checklist, you know, you have written like all the steps, switch on the machine, make sure you segregate the clothes, you know, press this, put the liquid, blah, 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 you know, and then the children can basically do it the same, like as if they are in a cockpit, one reads the checklist, the other actually does the thing physically. Uh, and then they know, you know, the, the task is completed correctly. That's how they learn. And it's fun. You know, yeah. for children, it's fun. 
Um, so th there are a lot of things, and you know, I think that parents can have to also be a little bit more creative and willing to try new things because they are just like overwhelmed and stressed and saying like, oh, I have so many things to do. But if you really um, stop and uh, take a breath and, you know, try to approach the situation in a different way, you know, there's so many things that you can do and children will have fun and they will be occupied uh, and they will learn and like, you know, what else do you want, you know? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You, you can't um, make any changes by doing the same thing over and over again, have you? You've got to try new things. For you personally, what has been the biggest impact for you in terms of stress relief? Um, my, uh, my, biggest, uh, my biggest tips for stress relief. The, what's had the biggest impact on you? In Which terms of, of relieving stress, right? Mm -hmm. um, personally, um, yoga and meditation, these are the top two things that really work for me. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, just going outside. So, you know, you can combine, um, okay, obviously you can do yoga outside now, like in the winter months in London, it, I wasn't doing it. <laughs> it's not my thing. Um, however, yes, I, I was uh, going out for walks, listening to, you know, um, uh, different forms of meditation, you know, there are walking meditations, you can still like focus on something and walk and listen. So it's, it's, it's really cool. So, uh, or just going for walks, you know, I don't know, listening to Clubhouse, listening to audiobooks, listening to something else, um, or listening to music. Uh, so those things were working for me and uh, I, uh, I know uh, I'm human as well and I'm not always super disciplined. So I know uh, like my yoga practice, if I don't do it in the morning, the chances of doing it later on throughout the day are getting slimmer and slimmer. So, mm -hmm. so uh, I, I just know it and I, I know that when I start my day with yoga it's just like you know everything is different it's such a big change you know my attitude is different my um approach is different i'm just like you know um i'm having like you know, yoga also creates a space you know to to set not only to relax your body and just stretch your body in the morning and make you feel better but also to create this space in your mind of like you know setting asking yourself first thing in the morning, what is your intention for the day? How do you want the day to enroll? And I don't know how it works in some magical way. It, it just works. Uh, whatever you say, I want to have more fun or I want to complete this task. I want to complete this goal. You know, it's just like, you know, your, your mind is already on that track of thoughts and you know, you, it's, it's so much easier than to, to work. So, um, yeah, that, that, that is definitely something that works for me. Yeah, that sounds absolutely perfect. It's a habit I really need to get into. I, li I like to meditate in the morning and that really helps to set me up for a good day. But yoga is definitely something I think I need to, to put on my list and try and get into a routine with. So, okay, yeah. so <laughs> you've been running a series of really good masterclasses on your Facebook page um, around wellbeing lately. And that information is just so so important at this time for everybody you've also written a super book 100 ideas to improve your psychological well-being which you're offering free that's absolutely amazing so yes. um i have posted the link to that in the um in the page so if anybody wants to to go to that and i do encourage you to go and download that guide it is absolutely amazing um is there any other way that um, people can work with you or how can we find you? Yes, definitely. Um, you can go to my Facebook, Katarzyna Richter, or my, my page or my website, which is Deal with Culture. And um, uh, the name is a little bit funny because, as you've mentioned, I am cross-cultural psychologist and many years ago when I was starting the company, I was primarily doing the um, cross-cultural communication. 
Um, and now I, I shifted more towards uh, well-being and, and recruitment. So, um, yes, I, uh, I invite everyone who is um, needing support within creating um, structure or a strategy around well-being, uh, who is wondering how to function better, more effectively, uh, how to deal with uh, stress or, you know, the difficult emotions. Uh, anyone who, who is open to, to get professional support around that area. Uh, I am offering individual consultations. I have programs around that. Um, I have online program. Uh, so uh, I'm sure that there will be solution, you know, to uh, to all um, different issues that we experience around around well-being, and you know, there's no reason why we should um, really go through all those emotional difficulties when there are solutions out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, your work is absolutely amazing. So um, Thank you. yeah. That's brilliant. And the well-being interviews that you've been running lately, which page are they on? Can people find you on Facebook? Um, there is actually, uh, the, the, there's quite a lot of content and interviews on uh, YouTube. So if you go on a YouTube channel and put my name, Kasia Richter, uh, you will you will find uh, a lot of interviews and a lot of content, not only about uh, well-being, uh, digital well-being, so creating good relationship with technology, uh, digital uh, detox, uh, and also um, interviews around resilience. So functioning better when we're going through difficulties, knowing how to stand up when we fall. This is resilience, and it's also super skill that you know we it's very useful to develop so the, there's a content around that that i absolutely invite you to uh, to to watch that's amazing now while you've been talking i've been trying to see if i can get the questions up on my phone and unfortunately my phone's still got that little thing whirring around so it's going back to the technology at the start yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. You've given some wonderful advice there again on lots of tips and managing emotions and what well-being is and um, different ways to deal with that for adults and children. And it's just been an amazing interview. Thank you very, very much for joining us. And Melanie, thank you for, for creating this wonderful opportunity and uh, the space for, for sharing all of that tips and uh, I uh, I hope it's uh, it's useful to many, and um, uh, yes, best of luck with all um, all your projects and your your meaningful work because it's it's really has to has to go up to the highest level because uh, the work that you've created, you know, I, I really feel it's so fundamentally important to those skills to be learned to be taught to children, you know, at school. Uh, because it will change so much their life as adults um so it's 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 a big mission <laughs> yeah for both of us <laughs> but, <Yes. laughs> but we're dedicated and that's what we're about so um thank you once again so i'm going to end the broadcast again now and thank you once again if you've been watching us either live or on the replay bye